welcome to our video tutorial for this cat mattress blanket in this gingham pattern that you can see Melba enjoying here. So I hope you like this tutorial. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this gingham mattress blanket, you'll need yarn in three colours. Now, if you want the effect that I'm going for, you'll want a white or a cream. You'll want a dark tone, so I've got this dark green. And then you'll want a tone in between the two colours, so I've got this pale green here. So, um, yeah, you'll need those three colours if you want that gingham effect. This is a acrylic wool blend. It's about a five weight. And normally when I make these mattress blankets, I use three strands. I triple strand each of my colours. But for ease of demonstration today, I'm just going to make up a sample and I'm just going to use one strand per colour. You'll need a crochet hook to correspond to your yarn. I'm using five millimetres for the main part of my blanket. And then I'm going to use a four millimetre for my border. And also, yeah, the border is completely optional. You don't have to do that. And you also don't have to change hook size. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to do that, but you don't have to do that. You'll need some scissors. You'll need a darning needle to weave in your ends. And a tape measure would be handy just to take some measurements, um, you know, as you make your blanket. And to also measure what dimensions you want this to be. So this is fully customizable to the dimensions of, you know, whatever you want to use this for. Um, yeah, and you, it, just a good idea to have a... a a few measurements with regards to the um, number of stitches you're making per square. So we'll talk about that a little bit more, in a little bit more detail soon. Okay, so here's one I've made up before, and this one's folded. It's actually folded in quarters. My dimensions are 50 centimeters wide by 40 centimeters high, and each of my squares are about six centimeters square, okay? And for me with a triple strand of the particular yarn that I'm using, that equals six stitches, okay? So what it might be a good idea to work up just a few, using the hook that you're using, the yarn that you're using, and just to work up a few stitch, you know, a few stitches just to see how wide you want your squares to be, okay? So, um, so like I said, with a triple strand, this is six stitches, but and six centimeters across. Um, yeah. So, to work out how wide you want, so you want, sorry, just to go back to the squares, you want even number of stitches in your squares, okay? Because we're alternating single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. So you want an even number of stitches in your squares. So you'll either have like four, well, actually you could even start with two, four, six, eight, you know, however big you want your squares to be. Now my squares could have been much smaller. They could have been, you know, much bigger. It's entirely up to you, the look that you want. And then you're going to um, have an odd number of squares down the width of your blanket. So you can choose any odd number. Today I'm going to make up just a little sample of three squares, but you can have five, you can have nine, you can have 11, whatever. You can, this is nine, this, this particular one. And this gives me 50 centimeters wide approximately. Okay, so yeah, so that's with regards to sizing. Now, um, the stitches and techniques that you'll need to know are how to slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain, as I said, how to single crochet, how to double crochet, and that's pretty much it other than weaving an end. So it's definitely beginner friendly. There's just a few calculations and, um, you know, just a couple of little fiddly areas with, um, you know, continuing color through and uh, changing color, but I'll run through all that with you. So, um, you know, yeah, come with me and, and definitely a beginner project. And as you can see, it has this beautiful effect. I love this, this gingham effect. And um, as I was saying before, the border that we add here is just purely optional. So I've made a three row border. So I've got my white, my pale pink and my uh, reddish pink here. 
So you can, you know, you can do the border just one row. You can do it three rows. You could do it five rows. You could do, you can completely tailor this to what you want to do. So I'm going to do, once again, I'm going to do this three row, row border. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, and just to mention how that we'll be working this. So we'll be starting with our light color and then we'll use our mid-tone and then our light color. Okay, so we'll be working, so for me to get my six centimeters square, each of my squares has four rows, okay? And then we move on to the mid-tone, the dark mid-tone. Okay, so I'm just making, like I said, just a little sample of three squares. So that's how I'm going to work it. But each square, so each each section, like this, has, for me, four rows to give me my six centimeter square. For you, it might be a, a, a different number of rows, you know, per section. But just to note that the mid-tone carries through to each section, okay, so it's only the 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 white and the the dark tone that we we um, snip off our you know cut our ends and then you know reattach so this color continues all the way through whatever is the equivalent for you for this color will continue through the whole blanket okay so take your take your white or cream or your palest color and you'll make a slip knot onto your hook. Now, so you will have worked out how many stitches you want to complete your square. Okay, so it'll be an even number, as I said. And for me, I'm going to just make six. So I'm going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, I want only three squares. And you'll work out the number of squares that you want in each you know, in the in the width of your blanket. So, for example, I'm using just three to make up a sample. So I want six times three plus one as a turning chain. So you'll have your number of stitches will be an even number. You'll multiply it by the number of squares you want in the width of your blanket. And I recommend to you that that's an odd number just to get that. So you finish, you begin and so you begin on on the pale color and you end on the pale color okay just to give you the effect so I recommend that you have an odd number of squares in the width of your blanket so multiply your number of stitches by your number of squares and then add one and that will give you your chain length okay so for me I've got six times three and that's six so I'll do another 12 and then I'll add one on the end as a turning chain. So you go ahead and you complete your chain. I'll finish mine up here and uh, we'll meet shortly. Okay, so I've got my chain of 19 there. Okay, so what you're going to do is work into your chain now. So we'll start with our, our cream color and you've got the option to work into this third loop in the back of your chain here. Um, it'll it just gives you so if you don't do that What happens is at this chain edge you get these little you you can see here you'll get these little holes So if you want to make those you know diminish those a little bit then what you can do is work into this back third loop Okay, so the front of your chain has the V's the back of your chain has these little loops on the back here so I'm going to do that for this sample. I'm going to actually work into the these third loops. So skip that first chain. That's just your turning chain. And you're going to place a single crochet into that second chain from the hook. In the next stitch, you're going to place a double crochet. So these are all US terms. Place a double crochet. Now, because I've got six stitches per square, I'm going to repeat that two more times. So it's, we're just alternating throughout the whole blanket, single crochet with double crochet. And then double crochet. And then to give me my six stitches, I want one more set of single crochet, double crochet. Now, on your last double crochet, don't finish it off. This is where we're going to change color. Okay, so this is my last double crochet. So I'm not going to finish it. I'm just going to leave that unfinished, halfway finished. And then I'm going to introduce my mid-tone. 
So take your mid-tone color and then the way I do this, and if you've got a different method, you can use it for sure. The way I do this is I just pull through, finish off my double crochet, and then I just tighten my strands. Okay, so here's where it will get a little bit fiddly. You can leave that tail end of your of your mid-tone. You leave, leave that behind. That can stay out and we'll weave that in later. But now you've got to carry your white with you because you want to continue on with your, your white squares after, okay, after you've done this mid-tone square. Okay, so just make sure you're working in that, that tail end as you go. So place your single crochet in the next stitch. So always alternating single crochet, double crochet. So keep that tail out the way. Bring the white with you and just work with your mid-tone color. So single crochet. And then double crochet. And single double. Now just make sure, oh, see I haven't bought my, make sure that you don't do that. That's exactly what you need to be careful of. Keep checking the back of your work and make sure that your tail is coming with you and that it's not, it's not bulging out. Okay, so you want to keep a level of tension on that that tail that you're con you're carrying through so single double single double so make sure you're working over that white which I didn't do in those first couple of stitches so then just check that it's you know, you can just gently pull it through to make sure that it's not bulging at all as well. So you will have to kind of keep checking, especially if you're working with more than one strand, you'll have to keep checking the back of your work as you go, just to make sure that you're not, you know, that tail's not poking through. And my last double crochet, which I won't finish. So I'll just work half of that double crochet and now I'm going to pick up my white strand and finish off that double crochet. So just give that a little, you know, little check, just make sure everything's good in the back there before continuing on. Now this will be my last square but you'll probably have many more squares to go. So you'll just basically repeat that same thing. You'll, so single crochet working over the colour that you're carrying through double crochet and then single crochet so the stitch pattern never changes okay it's just always that single crochet double crochet which I've used that pattern for two reasons one it gives a really nice close weave texture so claws aren't easily um, caught into in the blanket and also it gives it like a, you know it makes it quite padded you know, it makes it quite a, a thick stitch sequence. So this is my last double crochet in this in my little sample row. So you can see we've got we've got this is what we've got so far. So you'll continue on because you'll definitely have more squares than me. Just keep alternating this pattern. Okay, so your six if if you're using six or whatever your number of stitches is, for me it's six 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 and then I'll just continue you you know you'll just continue on and just again just check that tail at the back there you'll hide it as well as you can that's another advantage of the triple strands is it hides things better but the there you go that's row one okay so you finish off your row one and I'll uh, you know you can pause here and then we're going to continue on with row two Okay, so moving on to row two, so you've, in this last double crochet in the row, you've completed it with the same color, okay? Now you're going to just chain one and turn, and you're going to, of course, bring your color with you, bring your mid-tone with you, and then you're just going to do the same thing, so single crochet, double crochet. single crochet and double crochet 
then I'll just pull on that tail again, single crochet, and then double crochet. So this time we're not finishing the double crochet, we're going to pick up our mid-tone. Just make sure before you do that the tail's nice and taut, but not, you know, not so tight that you misshape your work. And then you'll continue on with your next colour. So this is how it's going to go, okay, until you reach the height of your squares that you want. Okay, so you probably want a square, you know, to give you that gingham, gingham look. So however many rows you need to go for to achieve your square, that's what you'll do. Oh, hang on. Double crochet, single crochet. And last one, double crochet. Don't finish. Make sure that tail is pulled through and change your colour. And then you continue on. So yeah, continue on like that for row two. And for however many rows you need to to reach your reach your square. Okay, so I'm going to continue on. I'm probably going to do yeah, it's probably going to be two more rows for me. It's probably going to be once again four rows. So I've done two. This is coming up to my end of my second. I'll do two more and that will give me my square. So I'll meet you once I get to the top of my squares. So hopefully you've you know you've got enough there you can just continue on so you can see the pattern is very repetitive it's just paying attention to the colors and you know changing the colors when you need to and and just paying attention to the tails and making sure they're coming through nicely with you okay just keep checking the back of your work okay so um, you keep on going and I'll meet you once I've finished, I think it'll be at the end of my fourth row. Okay, so you can see I've got my squares there and I'm just placing my last double crochet into this, for me, what is my fourth row. So now we're going to finish off because we, we're, so if we just go back to the one that I've made previously, so we'll be... So we've finished this section here, you know, this row here. Yours will be much longer than my little three squares, but you've, we've finished this one here. So we're moving on to here, okay, so we're bringing the mid-tone in first. Okay, so we, we'll finish this last double crochet with the mid-tone colour. Okay, now you can snip off your, your white here until we need it again so you snip off your white and then we'll continue on with our mid-tone color okay so you can you can work in your tail here if you want to or you can just weave them in later I'm gonna work mine in now so single crochet double crochet single crochet single and you're probably also seeing it's easy to tell where you place I mean you're only alternating anyway always start with a single crochet end with a double crochet because you've got an even number of stitches but you can start to see where they go you know the single crochet goes there and the double crochet goes there okay so we don't finish off our last double crochet and now we're going to introduce the dark tone okay so just as we did down on that first row we're just going to place our so actually let me get rid of my white tail now i think that would be enough at least for this demonstration so we'll just change color as we did before so just pull up a loop and tighten your ends. Now you want to bring your, oops, just pull that yarn a bit. So we want to, we want to bring our mid-tone with us. Okay, get that bottom tail out of the way. And so we could have, actually we could have brought that tail with us as well. I just didn't do it this time, but it's just, you know, it gets too many tails as I'm demonstrating. So we'll just weave that one in later. 
So you can bring this tail with you if you want to, just to weave it in. But you definitely need to bring your mid-tone tail with you, okay, your working tail there. So single crochet. And if you need to, just tighten your, tighten your loops. And then double crochet. Single crochet. And double crochet. Single crochet. And double crochet. Actually, oops, don't finish that double crochet, of course. Just make sure your tails are pulled through. And, of course, we're going to finish it off with a mid-tone. And I'm going to just snip that, that excess tail so we can get that out of the way. And then I'm going to finish off this row with my mid-tone. So single and double. Okay, so you can, I think you can pretty much see how this goes now. Okay, so we're just going to finish off this, this gingham pattern like this. Alternating those, those squares, so single and double. And then we'll carry our dark with us over to the next row and chain one, single, double. So you finish this next set of squares. So it'll be exactly the same number of rows as your previous one. So you'd, I'll, I'll do my four rows. You'll do however many rows you're doing for your size squares. And I'll meet you after that and we'll change one more time. And then after that, I think you'll be ready just to, you know, just to go off on your own. So I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to finish off my next three rows of these, the mid-tone and the dark tone. And I'll meet you after that. Okay, so I'm just coming up to the end of my next section of colours. So... Obviously, for this one, don't fin this last one here, don't finish off your, your double crochet. And then we're going to change back to our white. So it's just this, it's just this, this uh, however many rows, it's just this repeat. So for me, it's a four row repeat. Okay, and then I'm just going to pull up a loop with my white. I can snip off my green. My dark green, I should say, because I'll need that next time. But I need to carry my mid-tone through with me. So I'll just chain one there and tighten off my ends. And turn. So you can bring all your tails with you or just weave them in once again into the end. You've just got to bring through that, bring through at least the the color you know the mid-tone color okay but you can bring all the rest of them with you too if you don't want to weave them in at the end so yeah so it's pretty much I mean it's, it's so exciting I, I love it I love seeing the the gingham pattern emerge so continue on for however many um, repeats you want for um, the you know for the height of your blanket so for me I'm just going to do one more now what I recommend that you do is that you finish on the same row as what you started on okay so it'll just give you so this is the this is the top of my blanket this is the bottom or whichever way around the bottom and in the top and so I finish with the same row as which I which I started and that will give you a more complete gingham pattern so for my sample here today, I'm going to finish off just this next section and um, yeah, just, you know, just for, for demonstration. And then we're going to start off on the border. Okay, so you go ahead and you make your blanket as tall as you want it to be. And I'll meet you once I've done this, this next section here. 
Okay, so I'm at my last colour change here, and what you can do, I've already snipped off the end, but what you can do is you can just leave that tail behind if you want to. It's just an option, and then you can weave it into this colour after. The other option is just to bring it with you, and you can um, put it into the border, okay? But you obviously you want to weave the same colour into the same colour, so you can just drop that tail behind now and finish off that last oops, that last square, or you can just work it in here and snip it here, if, snip it here if you feel that that's enough. I'm just going to drop that tail and weave it in after. So there's lots of options with the tails, okay, whether you work them in or you weave them in, but if you're choosing to weave them in, it's a good idea just to drop that tail now. Okay, so I've got double crochet and single crochet and double crochet okay so now we're going to work on the border optional border okay so this this my my little samples finished and that will be the equivalent of your blanket being finished okay so if you want to change like firstly decide whether you want to add a border and the way I did this last border is um, I've added a, so the stitch sequence is single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one. And then we add the next color. So for me, it was the mid-tone. We work into the chain space, single crochet, chain one. Okay, so I think it's called mo moss stitch. Um, yeah. I think so. Um, so yeah, that's how we'll work it. Now this is entirely optional. So I've worked my white, my mid-tone, my dark tone. You can work just one round, this next round of white. You could change it to your mid-tone. You know, you, you design this however you want. I think it looks nice finishing off with these three colors and having the darker color last. But that, because it, you know, creates a nice frame. But that's entirely up to you and, and your preferences. So I'm going to do the same thing on my um, on my sample as what I did on my made blanket. So I'm just going to change my hook because I prefer to use a smaller hook size for my border. But that's just my preference. You don't have to. Okay, so now you're going to just chain one here. And you, we're going to place evenly spaced single crochets down this raw edge um, separated by a chain one. Okay, so you want to make allow space for that chain one. So single crochet, chain one. Single crochet, and chain one. So there's obviously not stitches to work into, but if you can work them into approximately at the top of each row and allow for your chain one, so you don't want... You know, you don't want your single crochets to be too close together, nor too far apart. And single crochet, chain one. And you want to try and cover those edges as well as you can. Chain one. Chain one. So you, you know, you could just do this white border if you wanted to, just to tidy up the edge. A little bit. Okay, so now when you get to the corner, um, you place your you place your single crochet in the corner, and then you're going to chain two to get around the corner, and then place a single crochet back in that corner space. Okay, and then you'll just continue on. So chain one, and. Work into so this is your chain edge. So you'll be working into the so we had left those two front loops in the chain, so you'll be working into both of those and then chain one. So you skip a stitch or skip a chain with your chain one and then single crochet in the next chain. Okay, so continue all the way around your border, like so. So you'll work all the way around. Now, when you get to your corner, you'll do your single crochet in the corner, chain two, and then single crochet back into the same corner space. So work your way all the way around. You can work in that tail edge as you go if you want to, or just weave it in later. 
and then come all the way back around to where you started. So when you get up along this top edge it's obviously nice and easy you'll just chain one and skip one and work into your next stitch. So I'm nearly finished with this first round of border. So I'll see you very shortly when we get to the corner. Okay so I'm at my corner here so you want to finish off with that same that same corner pattern. Chain two and then back into that that space and then you can just yarn over and pull through with your first colour and we're going to move on I'll just snip off that end we'll just move we can move on now with the rest of our border so just make sure that it's you haven't done it too tight that it misshapes your blanket and moving on if you're if you're doing the same as me move on to your next colour and we're going to tie on wherever you want to tie on okay it doesn't doesn't matter you just want to tie on in one of the chain spaces okay so I'll just tie on here and pull up a loop this is how I do it you can tie on however you want to and then I'll chain my one okay and then I'll chain one and then I'm working into the next chain space with my single crochet chain one next chain space chain one and then I've got a corner here so I'll work into the corner single crochet chain two and then work back into that corner and then I'll work over this tail so I'll chain one here working into the next chain space and then chain one and then it's just you know it's exactly the same you just instead of working into stitches you're just working into the chain space okay with your with your single crochets and then chaining one in between so it's exactly the same but just working into the chain space so work your way all the way around and I'll meet you once we get back to here and then it's basically just the same process for the next color okay so we'll work all the way around and I'll meet you back here okay I'm round at my last you know round at the where I began so I'm just going to single crochet into that into that space where I tied on and then I'm just going to slip stitch into the next chain space and over pull through and I can tie off tie off there and then we've just got our last color to do if you cut you know you're coming with me you might want to stop there you might have stopped already so we're just going to tie on once again just tie on wherever you want to so I'm just going to tie on somewhere here with my last color chain one and tighten and you know you this time I'll bring I can bring that tail with me I didn't last time but I just wanted to leave a couple to weave in anyway so uh, yeah so we'll just do exactly the same thing chain your one and work into the chain space and I'll just bring all these tails with me so exactly the same thing chain space chain one so working over top of that previous tail so keep on going once again the same same thing again and we'll come back once we're all round to here okay so I'm just finishing off as I did before so I've chained one single crochet back into that same chain space that I tied onto and then I'll just do my actually you know what I'm going to give you an option here to finish off you can just slip you know slip stitch in and um, you know yarn over pull through and finish off but if you want to finish off so you can't see where your where your ending is you'll just pull out your hook like that but don't you know don't yarn over pull through just snip off just snip off your tail and then we're going to thread our darning needle and do this little invisible finishing stitch which 
means that you can't see the beginning and end of this you know of where you've worked here so what you're going to do is you're just going to work so under that chain space it's a little bit hard to see in this dark um, so we're basically sewing a stitch so it's a bit hard to see in this dark yarn but you're coming under the chain space and pulling through and then in that last stitch you're going down through the center of that stitch okay and so you can't see where you've where you've finished off okay or you can see it way less anyway and then you're just going to weave in any ends that you've got left over so let's just weave in this tail end so the ends that are in your border you can just weave them underneath the border stitches there pulling through and you can go backwards and forwards I just for this I just tend to go through one way but you know you you do whatever you need to do there so we'll snip that off and then if you've got it depends entirely how you've worked your ends how you've managed your ends um, you'll just weave in you know any of the colors that you've got into each color any of the tails that you've got now if you've ended up with one tail down this end and you don't have a color to weave it into then you can just um you know you know what i mean if you've if you've accidentally taken your tail through to the end of the row rather than dropping it in the center here you can just get your crochet hook and pull that pull that tail end back through to where you can weave it in okay so it's not a, it's not a disaster just or you can weave it into the into the border and then just I'll just go double back with this one so I'm kind of assuming that you know how to weave in your ends just a matter of disguising them in the back there now it's not very I'll finish off those ones later but um, I'm actually going to unravel this because it's just a sample but it's not super effective and just a small sample but that's that's the idea to make this large blanket okay so yeah I love this effect I just love seeing the gingham emerge and it's one of those projects that you can just kind of you know set yourself on the track of and and just enjoy crocheting so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial please like share and subscribe and I'd love to see photos of your cat using his or her mattress blanket so you can send those along to catventurous.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurous.crochet so thanks very much for being here and uh, hope to see you soon thanks bye so here's Melba enjoying her mattress blanket so this size here I've made to fit perfectly in her basket but you can also just place it onto you know onto the the uh, sofa or onto a seat and it works just as well so Melba enjoys it <laughs>